What is marine radar? The term radar is an acronym which stands for radio and range detection. A marine radar is a ranging and detection system that picks up signals from objects several hundred feet or several miles away from your vessel. The radar system sends out a signal in form of a sound wave. This pulse is sent out from the radar dish on top of your boat. When the signal is reflected by an object or target, the radar computer determines how far away it is and where it is located. It requires two types of readings for this to occur. The first is distance. Let's say that a boat is a mile off your starboard bow. The radar signal is sent out and comes in contact with this boat. Then it bounces off the boat and registers on the receiver. The receiver sends the signal to the computer in the radar, which calculates the time it took the signal to get and reflect back. If the computer knows how fast the beam is traveling, the speed and reflection can be applied to a formula to find the distance. As I mentioned, the second is position. The radar unit can determine a boat's position because the computer keeps track of where the radar unit is located when it receives a radar signal. The unit is constantly spinning on top of your vessel, so the radar beam is actually being swept across the water all around you. When a radar ping registers, the computer can tell where the object is located by the position of the radar unit. If the ping registers when the unit is facing 90 degrees to the south, then it plots that object 90 degrees to the south on the radar screen. Radar, is it really worth the price? The mysteries of radar and its uses for navigation have been endlessly discussed in forums and around tables up and down the country, in yacht clubs and other marine organizations. So has recreational marine radar changed, and if so, has it improved safety at sea or made it easier to navigate the oceans and the home waters around where we keep our vessels? Since the invention of radar, or more specifically the invention of the electromagnetron used to generate the microwave energy used for radar, not much has changed in the basic technology. Or has it? Peruno, Garmin, Lawrence, and Raymarine now have digital radars, and the Navico Group have launched a new range of broadband ones. However, do these new products help answer the mariner's questions? Where are we? And who do I need to avoid? Before we try to answer this, let's go back to the basics. Let's consider traditional radar for a moment. The main components of a modern marine radar are a scanner and a display. The former includes the antenna, transmitter and receiver, and the latter has whatever is necessary to turn the electrical data into an image the mariner can understand. Now consider the scanner for a moment. Traditionally, in pulsed recreational radar, the magnetron is fired up with a high voltage spike and the resulting emission from the magnetron tube at a frequency of 9.3 to 9.4 gigahertz, which is known as the X-band, is channeled through a waveguide and transmitted via a rotating antenna. The rotation speed of the antenna is usually in the region of 24 to 48 revolutions per minute. A single antenna is used both to transmit a pulse of microwave energy and receive the echoes that come from it. The time between the pulse being transmitted and the echo being received is used to determine the range. The angular position of the target, whether it's a buoy or another vessel, is determined by simply knowing where the antenna was pointed when the pulse was transmitted. Now let's consider the radar display. The display component of the radar receives the data after it's been partially processed in the scanner. This data is re received in the form of a signal and processing converts it into a into a PPI as seen on the display screen. These two stages of processing, one in the scanner and one in the display, combine to deliver the end product to the user as a readable display. Since 2003, both incremental and more significant changes were made to radar transmitters. During this period, changes have been made to the display processing to improve the representation of the data on the display. The radar images became clearer and the reputation of targets became more like a chart. Although not directly related to radar development, displays have also become multifunctional. They now display a combination of radar, chart, plotter, fish finder, weather system, and automatic identification system data. The ability to overlay radar on top of a chart image certainly helped users determine the difference between moving and stationary to returns from targets. However, the argument that too much information can cause information overload is equally valid. The improvement of cost-effective heading sensors has brought credible MARPA, or Miniature Automatic Radar Plotting Aid, functionality to the recreational marine market. Radar scanners become smart. Since 2006, more significant changes have taken place in the processing of radar echo and the control of the radar transmitter. These types of radar scanners have been called intelligent or active scanners. Think about the processing of the data in a radar system as a chain of events starting from the transmitted pulse and ending up as a pixel on your display. The change to an intelligent scanner has meant that more of the processing takes place in the scanner itself, the output from which is a generic communication method, generally such as Ethernet or other. The byproduct of this are thinner and more flexible cables between the scanner of the display. This new intelligence in the scanner has led manufacturers claiming their transmitters are now digital.
This claim is often misleading as the data processing has always been digital at some point in the chain. Recently, the point at which it becomes digital has now moved from the display further up the chain to the scanner. So is having a digital radar a good thing? The fact that the scanner converts the radar it returns to into the digital domain earlier has some advantages. Working in that digital domain means that more sophisticated signal processing can take place. Digital scanners are now available from Furuno, Garmin, Lowrance, Raymarine, and Simrad. With all this in mind, we should not question if a scanner is digital or not. Rather, what signal processing takes place and how effective is it? It is important to understand that it is not the technology that matters, but what the equipment designers have done with that technology. It's the advances in the processing of the data which will lead to more understandable radar image and a better experience for users. So why consider a radar? It's important to realize that radar is the only above water active navigational tool available to your vessel. Active means that it records and displays real live data that is relative to your vessel. It can detect numerous targets, such as other boats, buoys, and in some cases, rain or a flock of birds on the sea surface. The key aspect about radar on the are on the range, how far away, and how close to your boat. It can detect targets and how effectively it can resolve or separate targets around the boat. If you're new to radar, try this explanation of the principle that captures how radar works in the basic form. Imagine you're standing on the deck of your vessel after dark and your hands are two flashlights. The first of which has a wide beam, low power flashlight. When you shine it out to sea, you can't see very far and if two targets, say boats, are close to each other, you see them both at the same time. This is like using a small wide beam radar, usually typically an 18 inch diameter ray dome. You can't see very far and you see lots of targets at the same time. In the case of radar, seeing lots of targets at the same time results in just seeing one target on the display. Now change to your other hand and shine the second flashlight, which has a powerful, tightly focused narrow beam, and twice the battery power. As you rotate your body to look around, you see far into the distance and you see one target, then a blank, before you see the next. This is like having a narrow beam, high power, open array radar. So which do you need? So you can see that if you want to see further, greater than 12 nautical miles in the distance, and be able to distinguish between close targets, you need a radar with a narrow beam, typically less than 3 degrees, and more power, say greater than 4 kilowatts. Interestingly, it's the beam width that's more important than the power. Think about the flashlight description again, and imagine keeping the power at the same, and then focusing the beam. You would expect to see further and achieve better resolution. On the other hand, if your boating activities are mainly close to shore, and you use your radar as an aid for short-range navigation, you should be looking for a more compact solution, such as an 18 or 24-inch radome style radar. These types of radar are excellent for navigation in the 3 to 6 nautical mile range, which is where most people use their radar systems anyway. Other factors to consider and ensure you understand or discuss your radar installation are power requirements, antenna location not too high or you'll miss closing targets, and not too low or you would miss targets in the distance, and of course, your personal safety. More advanced radar features you might want to be on the lookout for. Number one, MARPA. The acronym MARPA stands for Mini Automatic Radar Plotting Aid. This is the ability of the radar and display combination to acquire and monitor other vessels, displaying them on your radar display and alarm if targets are in danger of colliding with you or your current course. Number two, alarm or sector guard alarms. These are useful for anchorage and provide a warning if other vessels or objects are coming within range you've defined on your display. Number three, radar overlay. If you have a chart plotter slash radar combined dis display or system, the ability to overlay the radar onto one of the chart maps helps the user identify specific objects or land features. Number four, Automatic Identification Systems, or AIS. If you're building a system and are considering AIS, which is capable of tracking other vessels that carry a transmitter, the ability to display these targets on the radar display will also help with safety and object recognition. You have a very def we have a very definitive video available on Marine AIS through YouTube.com. Number five, integration of marine multifunction displays and data gathering devices and sensors. Whether you're adapting marine GPS, weather sensors, speed sensors, fish finder modules, sonar, and or water temperature sensors, you can make your radar a compre comprehensive navigation remote device, allowing one display to have all the data you require to operate your vessel. If you want additional marine radar product information, please be our guest at our website with the URL psicompany.com slash radar. We have the top marine radar products available from the best manufacturers, including Furuno, Garmin, ICOM, JRC, Coden, Lowrance, Navico, Raymarine, Cytex, and Simred. 
You can also call us weekdays from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and our toll-free number is 1-800-826-2907. We are here and ready to help you with any questions on marine radar, including volume or fleet pricing, and we can also help you interfacing your marine radar to other network devices on board your vessel. Look, we came to work today just to help you with your marine radar needs, so please feel free to give us a call. We'd be happy to help you.